Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It has been so long since I last talked about endogenetic alopecia on this channel. So this is gonna be the first video in a long video series where we will talk about the latest updates and the developments in treatments for hair loss. But before doing that, we need to make a little recap about the pathogenesis or the mechanism of how men's hair fall. We men have the testosterone, which is the main hormone for males, which makes most of our male characteristics. Once we hit puberty, that testosterone starts to be uh, excessively transformed to its active ingredient, DHT, dihydrotestosterone, which can have a lot of good effects on our bodies. It can make our beard grow, it can make our voice sound more masculine, and it can also make our hairs fall. Some people are more, more predisposed to that negative effect of DHT, uh, uh, making our hairs fall, while some people are less predisposed to that effect. It all comes down to your genetics. If you're genetically disposed to having more DHT receptors on your hair follicles, and uh, those receptors are more sensitive to DHT, your hair will fall once your DHT levels come up, once you hit puberty. So uh, when it comes to treatments in androgenetic alopecia, there are some really, really, really exciting treatments that are coming in the ways. But let's first talk about the conventional ones, the ones that are uh, mutually accepted by the scientific community and have been used by men for ages now. So the first one is the stimulants package. And one of those treatments is minoxidil. Minoxidil is a vasodilator. It dilates the blood vessels underneath your hair follicles. More blood uh, vessel diameter means more blood flow. More blood flow means more nutrients come into that hair follicle. And thus, the hair follicle will be less predisposed to the miniaturization process which is basically the medical term for the bad effect of DHT. Now, this all is backed by the blood flow theory, which uh, basically indicates that the whole hair loss issue is caused by less blood flow to the scalp. Now, this theory has been a controversial issue uh, among scientists. Some people believe it's the real theory behind hair loss, some people don't. I don't like having this black or white uh, approach, and I haven't seen any uh, real scientific data rejecting the blood flow theory, and I haven't seen any scientific data also affirming that the blood flow theory is the only mechanism driving hair loss in young men. So what I'm gonna say is it can be a mechanism and definitely minoxidil is a helpful way to uh, help battle against hair loss for a lot of men. The second conventional treatment is finasteride. 5 alpha reductase is the enzyme that transforms testosterone into its active ingredient, dihydrotestosterone, DHT, the hormone that attacks hair follicles, as we said in the beginning of the video. So these class of drugs like finasteride, like dutasteride, actually block that enzyme, the 5 alpha reductase, thus blocking the transformation of testosterone into DHT less DHT, less uh, uh, miniaturization of hair vocals, and thus uh, theoretically and practically in uh, various clinical studies, less hair loss in men. And there are many, many, many things talked about finasteride and 5 alpha reductase inhibitors because contrary to other pharmaceutical class of drugs, this is a uh, uh, block in your hormones. So it can definitely have some side effects and i talk thoroughly about those side effects in other videos on my channel and i will talk in the future but for now these are the two main pharmaceutical drugs used against hair loss that are widely accepted currently minoxidil and finasteride some people use like to use supplements like multivitamins some people swear by vitamin biotin the b12 vitamin but uh, uh, those are the main drugs used and uh, uh, currently accepted by the scientific community and backed by data, minoxidil and finasteride. There are some other promising hair loss treatments 
that are currently uh, under development but this is not going to be a thorough detailed video about each one of them and the pathogenesis and side effects and the data about each one of them i'm going to make separate videos given updates about the clinical data out in the last couple of months about each one of those drugs in different videos again in this video i'm going to, i'm just going to cite those different treatments so, so the first one is uh pyrolutamide it's this compound being developed by a Chinese company called Kinto Pharma. It was actually called KX826, if I'm not mistaken. That's the uh, term they used for it before using the name pyrolutamide. But it has this interesting mechanism of action because it is actually an androgenic receptor antagonist, which means it basically binds to the androgenic receptors, the DHT receptors on hair follicles. Remember, that's the main problem with androgenic alopecia. People like us are uh, more predisposed to having receptors that are sensitive to DHT, right? So this drug, pyrolutamide, theoretically binds to androgenic receptors and blocks those receptors. It's an antagonist, so it blocks those receptors, keeping DHT from binding to them, thus uh, keeping the hair follicle safe from the bad effects of DHT. Theoretically, it sounds amazing, although some problems have been announced by the company regarding the last clinical data about pyrolutamide, but I'm gonna make that uh, the topic of the next video. I, already talked about it in a video called the pyrolutamide disaster but i'm gonna expand on it and give my full opinion on it and i will also give my opinion on whether you should try it yourself or not i really genuinely believe that pyrolutamide is one of the drugs that drives the most interest among the hair loss community uh, i have this consultation service on calendly and people still book this 30 minute consultation with me talking about hair loss and uh, uh, what they think is the most and better option for their individual cases of hair loss and this is literally the compound that that i get most mostly asked about pyrolutamide people are interested about this stuff and the uh, company developing it kinder pharma definitely made their case uh, in the marketing stages of this compound the second one is gt20029 this one this one is is really an interesting one this is a protac a proteolysis chimera so we all have in the cells a mechanism to get rid of proteins that we don't need anymore that basically our cells see as unfit to use and it's called proteasome and what this drug actually does it's a really clever and creative mechanism of action for uh for scientists to, to think of to use for drugs. So I have I really have to give credit to the scientists of Kinto Pharma, which is the uh, manufacturing company for pyrolutamide and also this uh, compound GT20029. So they, what they do is they hack this ubiquitin proteasome system, the system that uh, our cells use to get rid of proteins. And it's a long, lengthy, detailed mechanism of action that I don't really see the value of getting into in this video i have a full video about it in, on my channel i'm gonna make sure to, uh, to put it here so you can watch it uh, but this uh, they, they hack that system and by doing that theoretically we can get rid of the androgen receptors on our hair follicles because those are basically proteins so by hacking that proteasome uh, uh, system we can make it attack the androgen receptors and destroy it and DHT won't find any receptors to bind into thus the hair follicle just like in the pyrolutamide case will be free from DHT so that's the whole point behind GT20029 also not very promising data and news about GT20029 that I have to get into in the different videos and give updates about the last year one year and a half news on this particular compound so watch watch out for it as well the next one is the one that is my favorite it's called vertoporphin half of my videos by this point are about vertoporphin on this channel vertoporphin is 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 one that really intrigues me as a scientist first because i'm a medical doctor but also the fact that vertoporphin is already FDA approved for other purposes. It's approved and widely used in ophthalmology. 
in uh, age-related macular degeneration. It basically is an anti-fibrotic drug. It interferes with one of the pathways that are used in our bodies to induce fibrosis and induce scar tissue. And the whole point behind vertoporfin is when you actually go ahead and do a hair transplant, you take out uh, hair follicles from the back and transplant them in, on top. And when you do that, you don't have any hair follicles left on, on, on in the back, on the donor area. That's because the harvesting process is so invasive and it's so harming to the tissue around it that it will induce a scar tissue uh, uh, process going on there in that area and thus no hair follicles will be regrown in that area because if you ever noticed scar tissues are different from uh, uh, normal tissues by different characteristics but one of them is the absence of hair follicles i talked about this really in details in a video called only vertoporfin can do this but uh, I'm gonna show it to you one one more time. I have a scar tissue on my leg from a recent, not a recent, but from a surgery I did on my knee. I don't know if you can see it here. I'm gonna try to zoom in, but that scar tissue doesn't have any hair follicles. That's because scar tissue doesn't have hair follicles. It's also less elastic than normal tissue, but the one that uh, interests us in this case, it doesn't have any hair follicles. And that's the main reason why we have a limited donor area. That's the main reason why hair transplants have a limitation, a big one, by the way. So especially for young men, young men have usually the more aggressive type of hair loss. So they usually lose hair even in their crown and they have a less number of hair follicles on their donor area. So vertoporfin is a really intriguing one for my specific type of hair loss. And it's also intriguing for me as a scientist. The next one that I wanted to talk about, and it's, it's a little bit forgotten, it's hair cloning. It was the first ever video I made on this channel. And a lot of people have forgotten about it. And to be honest, uh, we haven't had any news for like the last couple of years, maybe two, three years uh, on this particular technique, but it's a technique uh, currently being researched by a Japanese doctor who goes by the name Dr. Tsuji. And Dr. Tsuji is trying to harvest some hairs from the back of the head. He tries to harvest not even the hair follicles, but the stem cells in the hair follicles and try to uh, alter those stem cells so that they can become uh, multiple hair follicles. So he basically is trying to make hair follicles that have the same genetics that we do just in a lab so that we can just like vertoporfin have an un unlimited uh, uh, donor area and uh, break those limitations on hair uh, on hair transplants. It's a really interesting one. I think this is the technique or the treatment that is the furthest from being achieved, but yet I really think it's an intriguing one. The reason is if we could really achieve multiplying or cloning hair follicles in lab conditions, just by using stem cells from existing hair follicles, we can do that very much to any other organ. So this really extends more beyond doing an aesthetic surgery, something that's uh, really important for a lot of men, but ne not nearly as much as important for people losing, for example, their liver because of cirrhosis or their lungs because of interstitial lung disease or other medical, really serious medical conditions. So I'm really intrigued with uh, about hair cloning as a hair loss treatment, but, but also as uh, uh, it's, it's one technique that if we do achieve, is gonna make a revolution. In, uh, in medicine. So that's one to watch out for, not only if you're a, a hair loss sufferer, but also if you're a science enthusiast. And the last one I wanted to talk about is Cosmorna. Cosmorna is actually not a pharmaceutical product, it's a cosmetic product. And it's one that have been developed by a South Korean company. And this company that actually contacted me, by the way, more about that later <laughs> in later videos, uh, used this back uh, backward channel to uh, get their product approved. So they didn't really uh, pursue the 
pharmaceutical approval because that takes so much time they pursued the cosmetic product approval in Europe so that their product could be sold under the name uh, or the class cosmetic product not a, a pharmaceutical product but it's a really interesting product that have mixed reviews I'm gonna make a detailed video about this one because it have been already released in the market and a lot of people have been buying it and using it so uh, a lot of people are interested in knowing other people's opinion about it again in my consultation service the most two products that i have been asked about is uh, pyrolutamide and then cosmorna especially since it's been released like one year and a half ago so that's what I wanted to talk about in this video. I also wanted to mention, I mentioned it two times already, that I have this consultation service. It's not a medical consultation and you should not think of it this way. I am a medical doctor in Russia and my country Tunisia, but you should not take these consultations as medical advice. You should take them more as research-based advice. So if you have a question about one of the compounds that I talked about today, if you have a question about how to approach your individual case of hair loss, hair loss can be different for different kinds of people. It can be diffused, it can be aggressive, it can be frontal, it can be more focused in the vertex, and uh, you have to have different approaches to these different kinds of hair loss. So uh, I will guide you through how to navigate your specific type of hair loss and uh, uh, answer your questions about the uh, compounds that you are interested about whether it's pyrolutamide, vertoporfin or different ones that you want me to do to, to make uh, to make the research for you so i'm gonna leave a link for my consultation service in the description of the video and uh, i'm gonna make sure to post some videos about these different uh, uh, compounds and the news that we have about them again i talked about all of these compounds before in my videos but so many news have been released in the last couple of years and I haven't really posted about hair loss on this channel for like one year and a half so I'll make sure to post all the news and all the updates here make sure to subscribe and follow the channel and um, as always stay safe